You may have heard there's been one of the biggest diamond robberies in history. Millions of dollars worth of diamonds have been stolen from a hotel in Monte Carlo. And the reason that people like diamonds is because they sparkle so much. Here I've got a model of a diamond. And the diamonds that you see and the diamonds that are stolen are cut with these very precise geometrical faces, which is what makes them sparkle. And they sparkle so much, much better than this lump of glass, because diamond has a very high refractive index. It bends light very strongly. And although people don't realize it, they really value diamond because of its refractive index. But chemists think about diamond in a completely different way. They're interested in diamond because of its structure. You can see here, I've got a model of diamond. It's very strong. I can push hard on here and it will not distort at all. So if you look at this atom here, it is bonded to four other atoms. One here, one there, third one here, and fourth one here. And each atom is bonded to four others, so you get a very strong structure. Chemists value diamond because it's so strong. And there are two different ways you can use it to be strong. One way is as a window to let light in or out of a high-pressure vessel. So here is a diamond window which is mounted on a plate and the whole thing fixed to a metal fitting for high pressure work. And if you look through the diamond, you can actually see. I can see Brady's wedding ring. Can't remember whether it's platinum. I think it's palladium. Yeah, it's palladium. So I can just about see his lens now. The idea of this is that you can shine light through a very high pressure fluid and look at a reaction under high pressures. Not terribly high, perhaps 100 atmospheres, 200 atmospheres pressure. But if you use glass, you'd have to use really thick glass and that would distort the experiment. The diamonds that are now used for windows like that are usually synthetic diamonds, though the structure is just the same. But the real power of diamonds is when you need very high pressures. And you do this with a diamond that is tapered like this one. You can see it goes downwards down here. And when you have a shape like that, if you press hard on the top, because the area of the top is much bigger than the area of the bottom, you increase the force as you push down and multiply it so you get very high pressure at the bottom. With windows shaped like this, you can get a very high pressure on this tiny face at the bottom, which has a special name. It's called the cullet face of a diamond. So you can take a pair of diamonds like this, one on the top, and another one pushing up here, and push them together. And this little cell here has two plates, one here and one here, which are pushed together and push the diamonds together. And the force comes from screws that hold the plate together. So if I turn this over, you can see there are three screws which you can tighten, which force these together. The amazing thing, with this tiny cell, you can squeeze a suitably small sample to pressures of more than 100,000 atmospheres. This is really high pressures. So the way you use this cell is that you take, say, a small crystal that you want to submit to a high pressure and put it between the diamonds surrounded by a small ring made of tungsten. So the liquid will transmit the force from the diamonds onto the crystal. Because if you just put the crystal between it, it will be crushed to bits. But if it's surrounded by a liquid, the pressure pushes from all sides and all being well, it just gets squeezed. Some crystals, it makes no difference if you submit them to pressure, but if you have quite a complicated molecule, as you increase the pressure, it can change its structure. Even the diamonds that are used in labs are quite valuable, and so sometimes even our diamonds get stolen. But 
The thieves are usually disappointed because their value on the black market is very small because nobody wants to wear diamonds like this as jewellery. Originally, diamonds were made by heating carbon at very, very high pressure. And this was expensive and you got rather poor diamonds. Modern diamonds are made by so-called chemical vapour deposition where you take a compound in the gas phase at high temperature and it decomposes to give a layer of carbon. And if you do it in the right conditions, you can build up diamond literally layer by layer. So if you want, you can coat metals with diamonds or you can grow whole crystals of diamonds rather like the ones here. Is there a difference between manufactured diamonds and diamonds that come out of the ground? Manufactured diamonds do not usually have the same high optical quality that makes natural diamonds so beautiful because natural diamonds have been made under high pressure and sat under the ground for millions of years and the tiny imperfections, which don't really matter to scientists, have essentially disappeared because the diamond has been heated so long that they can diffuse out and so you get these really perfect crystals. So I don't think that the high market jewellery industry is yet being threatened by synthetic diamonds.